All right, so welcome everybody to episode 89 of How to Draw Duty. And today, duty becomes dread. Judge dread, that is. Let's uh, get it. Hi, I'm Vera. Wait, hold on, I'm Vera. Well, we're both Veras. Anyway, welcome to Drawing Duty, where I take my favorite character, Duderi Shuranius from There's an Alien in My Toilet and I put him in all sorts of costumes from your most iconic characters to just a pirate or even uh, Thundercats or a bandit. Well, every day I take duty and I have fun and I'm glad that you're here to have fun with me. If you have time, please check out dutiesworld.com and if you like this episode and every episode before it, please subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much and let's start drawing. Hey, what's up, creators? Outlet in the house, buddy. Um, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Drawing Duty. Oh, how to draw duty. Let me put the music on while I'm talking. Um, I'm back. Uh, we, my wife and I, some of this, my wife. 22 years ago, we were at the Grand Canyon. We were in Sonoma, Arizona. And then we hiked the Grand Canyon. And um, word of advice, guys, it looks easy on the map. Um, but uh, if you're not physically fit, um, your cardio, stamina, muscles, tone, it is a whooping. It is a whooping. We only did a two-mile hike down, but climbing back up, hiking back up, those two miles felt like 100 miles. Um, but anyway, have you signed up for Disney in my toilet? I hope that you do. Um, thank you to the 131 of you who have signed up for the campaign. I know you've missed me spamming social media for the past five days because I have been absent. But if you signed up, this is for issue number three, Aichi Wawa. And there's also um, Duty's Monsters on Planet Cthulhu. Um, that, that's a whole other um, adventure that Duty goes on. And um, I'm waiting for the proofs to come in. So I sent for the proofs already. So everything's ready to go. Um, join me on the 20th, um, which is, I think, next Tuesday, next week for the live launch. I hope that you're there. It's going to be fun. So last week, you saw me draw duty as Panthro. Uh, and this week, uh, I'm going to be drawing duty as Judge Dread. So that's going to be fun. Um, and again, if you like this episode and any of the episodes that came before it, um, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button, subscribe, share it with a friend. Help me grow this channel. It's been taking a long time to grow this channel. And uh, this is episode 89. So... Let's uh, get to drawing, why don't we? I know that you guys are just waiting for me to start hitting that pad. So this was Duty as Panthro, and it was simple. I didn't do any extra lighting work or um, tone work. I just did, kept it with um, two tones with this one. So we're going to do Judge Dread. I'm going to try to keep it just as simple um, and join Duty as Dread. So that's going to be fun. So let's uh, start with the head. Oh, wait. There you go. So let me get that eraser because I know I just put some stuff there and then you can't see it. Let's wait till it. All right, cool. Go back. So yeah, we went to, um, we celebrated our anniversary. Um, we went to um, Sonoma. We flew into Sonoma uh, to Flagstaff, which is just a one horse airport. Um, the airport itself, um, it um, only supports 40 seated passenger planes, the small little um, bombardiers, I guess they call them. Um, you know, and it's um, everybody, it's like, it's probably like the size of like, um, like if you ever went to a foot locker, <laughs> you know, it's probably like the size of that. Um, it was pretty interesting you know, how small it was. So, easy drive to get there easy to return the car because we had a rental car um uh that was easy um to uh because it's right in front of the door so you return the car right in the spot and then you go right into the building it's not like uh other airports where you return the car and you got to get um um one of those shuttles to get you to the airport up um, to, the, to the you know so you can check in so this was uh it was interesting but driving through the mountains, um, through rainstorms and thunderstorms, uh, and no lights in the mountains, that's a, that's an adventure in itself. Um, that was, uh, an interesting, an interesting, uh, experience for us. Um, 
but we had fun. Um, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack hiking that uh, Sonoma, um, I mean, the Grand Canyon. Uh, it's, well, it took a toll. Um, I, I was like, please, Sam, don't have a stroke. Please, Sam, don't have a <laughs> Please, Sam, keep it together. Come on, Sam, you can do it. You can do it. Um, and we only did two miles, which is, that is the craziest part of the whole thing. Um, we only did two miles. Um, but those two miles, for anyone who's not conditioned. See, it's funny, I'm physically strong, so I work out, but I don't work on my cardio. And that was the biggest lesson I learned from the whole experience was, Sam, you, you have to um, get your cardio up. Uh, my legs weren't ready for it um i was pulling some sort of muscle on my inner thigh that was like creeping up on me and killing me um it was every step was brutal um uh it was like oh but the sight i mean being in it was one of my things on my list i've always wanted to go to the grand canyon uh and um because you know i've only seen it in movies you know it was always on my list and you know well i only did a two mile hike down to my hike i do what other people do they go there they camp out um they go like in a week hiking um i didn't do that you know um i don't know if i can do a week in the grand canyon because you have the amount of supplies you have to carry on your back brutal and if we didn't have walking sticks, because we had walking sticks, we had a pair of walking sticks. If we didn't have those walking sticks, it would have been done for us. It was uh, interesting. But yeah, you know, we got back. It was a two-hour flight. Um, a great, you know, great time. We were in a nice lodge cabin. Um, we had our own bungalow, um, which is beautiful. Fireplace in the bedroom, fireplace in the bathroom. Um, it was nice. We, uh, my wife and I, um, got to be kids again, you know, because you know the real world, you know, trying to make it in comics, trying to make it in life, in this rough and tumble world that we're in, the crazy chaos. It was great to just be together. Why is Duty so tall? I don't know why I made him so tall, but we'll see. I'll fix it in a little bit. It was just, yeah, we we got to play. We got to be kids. We got to explore. We got to read up on the history of Sonoma. Uh, Sonoma. Um, there was like 89 cowboy movies that were filmed there. Um, John Wayne movies, Elvis movies. It was uh, pretty dope. And a lot of you kids don't even know who John Wayne or Elvis is, but uh, icons, icons in the game. looks a little too big but i guess when i put all the gear on maybe if i you know if i'm gonna do this let's try to do this the, the, the magic of uh cut and paste let's see something let's get this one let's get this here move this up a little there you go shorten the belly if i make that and then i might shorten the legs too legs a little too long you know it's gotta be duty at the end of the day I gotta keep it real Bill Dudester and then Judge Red had all these things on his body I don't even know why I picked this one um, he has something thin parts to his outfit it's crazy so I'm gonna try to simplify that thing let's start with the helmet first all right let's get the helmet so the helmet, co he covers his eyes. So I'm gonna put a shield here because he has a shield, right? And the shield is blocked by this. This goes down, it has like an X, a Y. So it has something like here, it goes down here, right? And then he has it in here, right? It goes there, right, for the shield. Yeah. 
whenever you join somebody else's characters, it's like you need the reference. If you don't have the reference, I'm gonna screw it up. And my sister had a good time, you know. My sister and my sister-in-law hung out. You know, she came out here to watch the the dogs while we were away. She hung out with my sister-in-law. Um, you know, they did the girl thing, whatever that is. Um, let me move this down a little bit so I can get that helmet. Yeah, it was um, it was interesting not promoting. I think that was the because <laughs> I'm always on promo mode. And it was interesting not not using not picking up the phone, not um, texting, not posting, none of that stuff. I did. Uh, it was a it was a actually what does he call it? invigorating? Um, you know, it was like you felt a little free. Like I feel like sometimes you're like a, a slave to your devices. You know, and I felt like wow, is this what it feels like to be normal? <laughs> You know, let's get that helmet up here. Uh, I'm not fit up to this here. And he has that. He has that shield. He's got a lot of parts. I picked this thing, hard one. All these parts. Just doing the flats for this takes forever. It's going to take forever. Let's uh, move this down a little so I can get the top of his helmet. A little more. There you go. Yeah, shout out to JD Calderon um, with Oswald Chronicles, uh, Campaign We Love. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, our campaign's about to pop off. Um, Daphne Page continues to kill it on um, Kickstarter to, with, with uh, Eagle Raven. She's doing her thing. Everybody's just killing the game. Um, Keith Murphy's about to do um, Valhalla, the rope to Valhalla. He has this neck piece here. Getting all of this together is the tough part. So let's erase that. It's too big a razor. So it doesn't confuse me. Get that out of the way. All right, there it is. Okay. All right, so he has that piece. All right, this goes. There's this, this chest piece here that goes down here. Right? And he has like this uh, up here. There's another thing right here. Right, oh, I'll do it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. No, I don't like that. Uh, and he has that chain. Oh, these guys with the chains. So I'm gonna put the chain here. The chain goes to this badge here. It's a big old badge. How do you carry that thing around? I am the law. I enjoyed the original Judge Dread. Dread. And then here's that eagle. Right. It's not going to be 
perfect, but whatever. Got an equal in there. All right, then he's got this chain. That goes up there. Got too many parts, bro. Too many parts. I'm not a fan of having to draw chains, which is why, you know, the guys that do spawn and, you know, they're freaking amazing. Oh, I got to turn that off. Okay, there it is. They're freaking amazing. All right, so then he has this dang big old shoulder pad that looks like an eagle's beak. All right, it's like this. This goes down here, this goes down here, this goes across. He has this eagle's beak, it goes like that. And then this goes across. Right, and then he has this big old freaking piece here. Now how do you carry that around, Dread? Let's get this over here. I'll do all the parts in a second. So this goes down here, boom. He has three layers to this. Boom. Boom. And he has this goes like this. Boom. 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 And then it's just uh, squares. Okay. So let's just do this. Left the circle, right the circle. Boom. All right, let's do that. He has some sort of bullet hole here. And then he has another layer. And then this goes boom, boom, boom. It's a big old thing. Don't know how the hell he walks around with that. It's like a football player. Yeah, it looks like he's wearing a football uniform. I just got it. That's what it looks like. Okay, so then he does this. Right? And then he has another one, just goes here. Then you got another layer here. Right? And this goes like this. Here, so just go boom, boom, and boom, boom. It's just the same thing here. I said boom, 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 boom. There, there's that. All right, so I guess this strap goes around the arm. All right, and then he has the damn fire. And the judge, judge, judge is ready for war. All right. All right, let's get here's this shoulder um, elbow pads. I'm not gonna try to make it as perfect as his, but we got the elbow pads. We got the strap that goes around here. There's a buckle right there. I'm trying to move this bad boy quick because I gotta eat this damn thing. <laughs> so I gotta eat this. Um, come on, Dread. Gotta make things a little easier. Just gotta go like that's a little shorter. And let's get this going here. And he's got this. All right. Yeah, as soon as I came home last night, I gave my dog a bath, a haircut. I pulled the clippers, trying to make up for lost time because he was like so excited to see me. And I was like, all right, you know what? It's still hot out there and your head a little too big. So we're gonna, we're gonna cut that bad boy up. And he was so happy once he got that haircut. Ah, uh, and he's got this, uh, like boom, boom. Okay, and then boom. Right, let's see that, that, and a lot of parts. <laughs> but then his belt line is crazy too, so. A lot of uh, gadgets on his belt line. All right, he's got all this crazy stuff. Right, boom, boom, boom. He 
ていただいて、全員しかやっていこうと思います。It's all the same size, so they're gonna fix that. Let's get that. And it's the American flag. Stars and stripes. Stars in there later, and then he's got this big old kit, whatever this is here. No, just gonna go this way. I was watching an interview with Shaq, it was fascinating how many businesses Shaq owns. Um, Guy's such a smart, smart. He's one of those athletes that really figured out how to、uh, create generational wealth and then blow his money.、Um, beautiful. It's a fantastic story.、Uh, great lesson for future、uh, athletes. Uh, you know, so they can protect themselves. Because one of the biggest problems that you always hear is that they、uh, they squander their money, they lose it all. And、uh, he showed, he basically demonstrated how to take his earnings and invest. All right, he has this. I gotta put this up here, which I didn't. Put this like this. It's a、uh, stick, bum, 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 bum. and the stick has、uh... right. That's the night stick, and he has his trap. Strap down that stick, and the stick is on a. Another one here. Okay, he's got that stick there, and he's got strap leg straps. So, for parents out there who have kids that are showing、um, signs of that they're interested in being illustrators or artists, and you want. To、uh, encourage, keep encouraging the drawing for the kids.、Um, you won't, might want to check out my campaign because I have a starter kit in the campaign、uh, for kids, and it's、uh, it's a sketchbook. It's a custom sketchbook with duty on it,、um, and each the starter kit comes with the sketchbook, the comic book, the guidebook. The activity book、um, and a pack of cards, and what it does is,、um, and the sketchbook, for, and it's only going to be twenty available for the starter kits. And for every one that picks up the starter kit, the first page of the sketchbook will be a custom illustration by me,、um, with a personalized note to your child with the child's name. So if the child is Timmy. Um, and you tell me that Timmy loves to draw animals or or dinosaurs or whatever it is. I will make a personalized note from Duty to Timmy、um, in each each book、uh, to encourage their growth and journey into illustration. Whether whatever type of illustration, maybe want to be a painter,、um, whatever it is, it's、um, uh, to help inspire、uh, the child's creativity. So you might want to check it out if you're a parent. It's a、uh, pretty dope, and I, and I know that you know once this goes out, there's going to be copycats because <laughs> there's always copycats that that's going to want to do what I what I'm doing. But、um, you know, I、uh, I truly believe 
uh, that the imagination, creativity, and art and music are all keys to happiness. Um, you know, being able to explore and uh, get that thing up in there. So I'm gonna shorten this. Just like that. Um, you know, so as every time you can inspire the child to be creative. Um, number one, it deters them from doing anything crazy because of all the outside influence. Um, uh, and number two, it'll encourage them to um, think of what's possible in life, right? You know, what's possible? Uh, the possibility and and push the barriers and the boundaries in life. You know, the worst thing you can do is stifle a kid's growth. Uh, you know, my mom encouraged my art. My, uh, my you know, I played sports. I, I, I illustrated it. Whatever it is that I show signs that I was interested in something, she encouraged it. You know, I got to pl- tap my hand into a lot of things, music and crafts and um, you know so but the starter kit's going to be fun I'm excited about it it's the first of its kind for me um, I thought long and hard on how I'm going to because I met a lot of kids at the conventions and these kids are all talk about yeah I want to draw I want to do this well I drew, a, I drew a super cat or I drew this and I'm like you know what and they like duty so why not draw with duty and get a personalized letter from duty um, uh, you know what a cool way to say you know what you know I have a duty comic duty says that he believes in my art uh, yeah I'm going from there Whew, man there was a lot of parts so let's, let's, let's ink this bad boy let's try to move quicker with the inking that took me 27 minutes just to draw that good golly this my molly Let's go to 15, 17, let's zoom in. This might be too big, let's go to 15, all right. All right, let's start with, let's start with that helmet piece. All right. I think the 15s are too big. The 12s. And then let's also up this back because it's a little too dark. All right, there it is. In fact, you'll start seeing some promos um, this week um, targeting or tailored promos for the families um, and for the kids. Boom, boom, boom. All right. 
Beauty still has to charge here. Let me see he has a crack here. Yeah. And he has this here. Uh, okay. What I realized at my time out in the mountains, in the wilderness, is how insignificant we are as a species compared to the massive, overwhelming size of this planet. And looking at, looking out at the canyon, you can see the history, which is fantastic um it was a great great almost spiritual type of uh, event uh for us you know it was just like wow oh, i didn't do that this is supposed to be like here Actually, I would have changed that. Like this and then up. So I would erase that right there. Yeah, the history is fantastic out there. Um, you know, it was funny because uh, me and my buddy we were talking about doing the. Um, they have a. Uh, rafting tour of the canyon that I saw on um, uh, the History Channel or something where they were talking about they found petroglyphs of uh, like you know like when you go with and they have like painting inside the caverns of like uh, aliens and, and, and flying ships and all this other stuff from uh, um, that the people I guess the natives have uh, left as record keeping so I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. I'd love, you know, I'm all big on aliens and um, sci-fi. And, um, you know, I do believe that there are aliens out there and that we're not alone. And so, you know, my wife won't do that type of thing. So we were talking about, let's just do it. But then when I found out, it's a two-week tour. Family, what do you mean two weeks? And the reason why it's two weeks is it goes from one point of the Grand Canyon to the other, and there's no coming back off of it. You got you don't get off until you get to the other end. So it's two weeks. So that means you stop at campsites and you camp out for two weeks to explore these things. And I was like, you know what? It sounded great in theory, but now that you told me it was two weeks, yeah, nah, I think we're gonna pass. Um, that was just like. Well, number one, it sounds like really expensive. So two weeks, that's for, I'll leave it for the people who have, you know, disposable income. Um, you know, that sounds like, we, you know, I can't afford that, but um, there's no way I want to be in the canyons for two weeks. Not if I have anything to say about it. So I have to take that off my list. So it's like, oh, maybe, you know, one, one of my other things on my list is um, going to New Zealand um, because they made, you know, they made the Hobbit Village from Lord of the Rings. They made it a landmark and that was a tourist attraction. So you can actually go and explore the huts, um, the homes of the Hobbits and uh, um, I'd love to go and experience that. So, time to save up and see if maybe one day that can happen. My dog did it again. He just opened the door. He's so rude. 
actually in this drawing um one of the things i didn't take my sketch pad i was going to take my sketch pad but i really didn't want to not like focus on my time with my wife i wanted to just like didn't want to say honey i'm gonna go and draw i can do that at home i uh, decided to take photos and use my photo references for inspiration when i draw so i was like you know what i'm just gonna go spend time with my life partner and uh make make her my, my focus and my priority and uh, uh do the other stuff later if you ever have a chance even if you can't leave your state explore your hometown explore because every every hometown has something you know and uh, take time to get out to nature you know and uh, reset you know because the world is unforgiving and the world moves on with or without you so why don't you just enjoy the time that you have on this planet and at least try to uh, learn and experience new cultures, new foods, you know. What's that look like? It's a bird, right? Yeah, it's the... This goes up, this tread. Hopefully I can get it all in there. That's a little too small of a day. There you go. Got it. Oof. And then you also got another piece in there like this. Okay. okay. There's that. You got to see mountain goat. You got to see uh, uh, people did mule tours. They were on uh, donkeys, um, donkey, uh, in the mountains. I remember this one couple was asking me, "How far did we go?" I was like, uh, two miles." <laughs> and they're like, "How was it?" I was like, uh, "Extremely rough and painful." I mean, I'm, I've been sore. I'm still sore today. My legs are so. Yeah, my leg reminded me, it's like, Sam, you're not as uh, fit as you thought you were. So, like, yeah, I know. So, because of that, now I'm, I'm adding running to my regimen. You know, got to get these legs up to snuff. He's got that, and he's also got this. Oh, he had that one piece here that I didn't even see. I'm going to put it this. I'll put it like that. There you go. I know it went down, but forget it. 
Ah. And then he has this. Man, you got a lot of parts, bro. Feel sorry for the illustrators that have to, uh, you spend more time just putting on the body parts for these characters. Uh, all of the jigamawidzits, all the gadgets. It's like, come on. I got call it this bad boy. And yeah, stop complaining, so I'm just draw. You're the one who picked it. hear each other bark and everybody wants to go and see what's up there's that strap all right so here goes the bird Gloves on. This is knuckle stuff here. All right, all right, there's that. All right, let's get the All right, we're, ma we're making some progress. We're making some progress. Headway. Headway. We're almost there. I gotta drop the colors. I don't know if I'm gonna go crazy with highlights and all that stuff. I think I'm gonna just do the, the basic fundamentals light and shade and that's sit with this one because it's really just a warm-up to have fun the great thing is that uh, uh duty's monsters is done issue three is done coach of Gore, and now i'm coloring and redrawing a lot of issue four um So, uh, I'm excited about that too. Okay. 
and issue four launches in January. So, uh, If you haven't signed up for, for my Kickstarter, I would love if you did. Even if you don't, even if you feel like, you know what, you can't pledge, uh, the more people that sign up, the, the more visibility um, Kickstarter will give to my campaign. So uh, any support that you can provide is so appreciated. The link is in the chat. This, and then I'm going to do this. Right. It's all about that base, about that base, no trouble. I'm all about that base, about that base. my dog likes to bark at the over the fence and my wife's always telling her not to bark and I'm like no you gotta let her bark because um, it, so people know that there's a there's a dog here you know because uh, people have been acting crazy lately kids have been violating people's homes uh, you know and it's just like no Let her bark. Let her. That's what she's there for. Um, all right. So there's duty as dread. Now let's try to drop some colors. Let's create a folder. Put the folder below. I always have the main line work above the layer of colors. And then let's add um, this. But let's make this the source. And now let's see. He's blue. His suit is blue. So let me get the blue. Let's go to the blue. It's a uh, different color blue. This is the color blue. All right, so this is blue. Blue, 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 blue. All right, this is also blue. I gotta get in between this stuff. I'll fix that in a second. That's blue. Arms are blue. Blue. That's. I'll make that blue. Okay. Pants blue. Mm. 
Let me just blue in that button and everything else. There's part of that thing. So that's all oh, that's blue. Oh, and then the helmet. This helmet goes. So that's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That's blue. That's a darker blue. Let's make that a darker blue in there. Oh. Okay. So there's the blues. And now let me go in and fill up the holes before I go into the next color. Because sometimes the bucket doesn't catch all the areas, so you have to go in and clean it up. Um, make sure go down. Are good. We got everything here. Oh, here we go. All right, so the blue is done. Now let's get the red. It doesn't have much red anyway. Oh, it does have blue in there, but that's a different color blue. Um, let's do the gold. I'm gonna do the gold on a. Well, 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 yeah, I'm gonna do it on a different layer. It's all one color. Yeah, so I'm gonna color. The shield at the top is gold. Right? All that's gold? No, that's not gold. This is all gold right here. And that is not, that's uh, part of the blue. Yeah, I gotta fix that. The shield. Let me get this brush. That's the only thing that's gold. It's just those parts right there. Now it's green. All right, let's go with the green. And it's like a... Like an army green. Which is... Oh, this is great. Did you stop that crap? This is green. The straps are green. Oh, everything's green. Alright, let's just get it all going. 
and I'll fill the holes. Is that green too? Yes, it is. It's green as well. Oh yeah, that has a strap. You gotta fix that. And then that is also green. Green, 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 green. Okay, I'm gonna make this green because that's like a one. And then that's black. And then that's blue. Green. All right, let me clean that up. Let's clean it up. Hear my dog, but uh, oops, he's uh trying to get at the cats. Don't know why, because if they if, if they smack him, he runs. So, especially mom, I have a little one, the smallest one. She's a uh, calico, tiny little thing but she has the respect and command of all the other cats. She's the smallest of all the ones. She's tiny, she's petite. Uh, I am the alien. Hey, what's up, buddy? Um, but uh, she has them all wrapped around her paw. I am the low. <laughs> um, So that's that. So let's get the silver in there. Silver and gold. Or the gray. Forgot that eagle. Get the gray buckles. Any more? This one here. This is gray. Anything else? Nope. I think this this is gray. Let's just get that going. That's gonna be red, so I'm gonna leave that. Get the red. Go all the way up. That's red. And then the blue. Right up here. And that's like a Dark there you go. Okay, and then this yellow. Got this. Uh, that is gold, red, white, and blue. Yeah, we got gold, blue, and then red, white, red, red, red. the black
And then that's brown. A lot of colors on this bad boy. And then this is gonna be dark brown. Okay. And then here, I just gotta erase that inner part in there because that doesn't belong there. All right, and then go back to the brown. Oops, which is this one. There you go. All right, let's zoom out for a second. Now I just need to do the skin. Boom. Let's see, did I get everything? There he is. Man, there's a lot of parts to uh, Judge Dredd. A whole lot of parts. All right. Let's start with the gold. Multiply. Zoom in. Mm, look at that. I don't like that. There you go. That's better. Where are you going, Bubba? Bentles, where are you going? Hold on, it's calibrating whatever it's doing. It's hard to believe that we're already approaching fall. Halloween's right around the corner. It is crazy. It's just crazy. You know, I've already made a year here in Texas, which is also nuts. I remember when the journey began, you know, shout out to my boy Johnny Syfax, um, because he was with me through the whole packing process, you know, one love to my boy. Um, it was just me and him. We packed everything together, you know, and it's hard, you know, when you're moving, it's hard to get people to even step up and volunteer to support. Um, but Johnny stepped up um, and uh,
Um, you know, it's I was ready for the move. Um, I think how easier it is to get from place to place was probably the biggest, most refreshing part of it all. Um, Food-wise, they eat too much. Um, you know, Texas, they love to eat. They love their barbecue. Um, and all their portions are huge. But um, I think, for me, the um, I'm not hustling and bustling and trying to get from one place to another fast. Um, you know, trying to... Um, escape the madness uh you know it's uh it's easy to find parking spots when you go when you go to the, the supermarket and you know you, i remember circling for a parking spot constantly um when i was uh on the east coast it was just like um traffic over there was crazier than it is here um I mean, I lived in Jersey, and it was like 12 miles from Manhattan. It would take me an hour and a half just to get across the bridge. Um, and then I was working in Brooklyn from New Jersey. My, my trip was three hours, you know, two and a half, three hours just to get from. And that was, I think it was like an 18 mile drive. And, uh, you know, I don't miss any of that stuff. And then, you know. Um, in New York, it was like uh, people didn't talk to you. They had their heads down. Uh, you know, everyone's running. Uh, over here, people look you in the eye. Hi, how are you? Uh, a little friendlier. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, my neighbors here are a lot different than my neighbors back um, out there. Uh, everybody was suspicious out there of you, uh, you know. You know, we had the neighbors, that, you know, the, the neighbor, the looky loose, look, always looking over the fence, wondering what the hell's going on on your side of the fence, and trying to hear your conversations when you're in the yard, <laughs> um, or just the not the friendly types. Or, um, not all of them were like that because I did have some really cool neighbors um, that we we built a friendship with. Um, but here, all the neighbors are nice. And everyone looks out for each other. Everyone looks out for each other, um, which is awesome. You know, there was some strange dude standing on my doorstep. Um, and I don't know if he was, I, I don't, hey, I don't know if he was, check, hey, I don't know if he was testing to see if um, my motions worked or anything. And I saw him, so I went outside. Like, hey, what's going on? And um, he just looked like he was on something. And uh, my neighbor was outside with a big old stick. And uh, from and he gave me that nod, like, I got your back. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And he said he thought my wife was by herself. He didn't know I was home. And he saw this guy and uh, walking on the block. And then he saw him come on my steps. So he decided to come out. And that's the kind of stuff that I didn't get when I was in on the East Coast. People just mind their business and they didn't say nothing until it was over. Here, everyone's watching through the, you know, and they know. Uh, but the shock is the heat and the weather patterns. The tornadoes, nothing like I've ever experienced. And the heat, the heat is like migraine causing heat um yeah it's on a whole nother level this this oof, this heat is crazy but for the most part i have no regrets i actually love it here um you know if we ever move, which I don't want to, but if like we had to, if we ever moved, I would consider um, like Sonoma. Uh, I really love the community out there. Uh, 
it would be either Boulder, Colorado, or Sonoma. Well, no, they're not in our business. They're, they're really looking at any strangers um, that walk in. Because unfortunately, uh, in Texas, there's been a lot of crazy stuff happening. Um, people breaking into cars, people breaking into homes. So all the neighbors are on the lookout um, and uh, for each other. Because a lot of the people in my neighborhood are either retirees, older, um, their kids are already older. Um, and uh, so, you know, every time, and everybody has the neighborhood app. So every time you hear something crazy going on in the neighborhood app, everyone's like, yo, um, you know, be careful, be vigilant. Um, there's been a lot of solicitation at the doors, people going door to door, you know, un, you know, and uh, so everyone had to put like, do not ring the bell unless we invited you. It's been a lot, a lot of crazy stuff. Um, so I actually appreciate it. Um, you know, like we forgot to tell them that, you know, my family was house sitting. So they didn't see us and they saw my family and they were watching <laughs> like, hey, what's going on? And we're like, oh, my bad. We should have said something. Um, you know, because whenever the neighbors go out of town, they let us know, hey, you know, we're going to be out of town. So um, there shouldn't be anybody at the property. We don't, even, we don't have anybody house sitting. So just to let you know, um, that kind of stuff. In New Jersey, it was different. We had nosy neighbors. We had the ones that were all up in your business. If we had work being done in the house or whatever, they come out, what are you doing? What's that for? Why do you have to do that? It was like, oh, God. You know, how much did that cost? Ah. They're like, oh. So actually, these neighbors out here in Texas, I actually dig it. One day, we'll uh, invite all the neighbors, maybe in the fall, you know, do like a barbecue type thing. Not right now, though. it's too hot. Ain't no way you're gonna see me in the yard barbecuing in the TV. I, we haven't even opened our grill once. We've had our grill because it was a housewoman gift from my brother. Uh, when, we, when we moved to Jersey. <laughs> well, they didn't stop them. They were just watching. To see them. Um, they didn't confront them at all. But my sister would mention the fact that, hey, you know, I, the neighbors were looking to see who I was. Um, um, no, 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 they don't, they're not confrontational that way. They'll just like keep an eye and say, hmm, where are, where's Sam and Des? And that was our bad because the neighbors have been good about telling us when they're going and we just didn't say anything. And you know, it's a community here. It's, a, it's different than in New Jersey. I don't, I don't, I'm not threatened by it. Um, I actually appreciate it. You know, because my wife is only 4'11, you know, um, and so. The fact that I got, you know, that they're willing to uh, be on the lookout, um, uh, it's cool for me, uh, you know. Because we have like our, our, we drive down an alley to get to our garages here. And, um, and sometimes you see these kids, these knucklehead kids that are not from the neighborhood They'll, they'll race through alleys. Or oh, sometimes you'll see people just going slowly, driving down the alleys to see what kind of cars you have, you know, what kind of system you have, you know. So one day I was in the yard and I heard a, an engine moving slowly, like idle. So I walked out into the driveway and there was these guys that didn't live in the neighborhood and they were just like scoping. And uh, so I just went out there and I looked at them and I was walking towards them and they drove off. You know, that's some crazy stuff. Um, and people were getting like their parts stolen from their cars and 
Um, yeah, yeah. Now those people know. Like I'm not gonna. I don't know. Like my neighbor across the street has a huge damn family, so I don't even know half of them. And um, and they always have like a different car out there, so I can never tell who's who. So I'm not gonna stop anybody. It's not my business. Um, um, you know, it's a uh, they got a huge family. I mean, every time I see a different car out there, and then um, but uh. But I think the ones that are like the couples, you know that there's only like two people that live there. Uh, and it's my neighbors to my left and the, and the three neighbors across from me. Very good at communicating um, issues. Um, some of them, you know, not every neighbor we know, but we know at least seven of them. Of oh, the red. Yeah, but I've seen those, I guess they call them Karens, the ones that are a little extra. Um, you know, inserting themselves in things that they shouldn't be inserting themselves on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, society is built on gossip. I was just talking about that with my sister. You know, it's like people love to talk um, and hate on others and uh, get up in your grill and let's just worry about their lives. You know, worry about yourself, man. You know, it's like, and that's why I got, that's why I got people into trouble. That's how those, those, um, people the, that the, the, that father and son that uh killed that guy because he was jogging uh because of his race because they were being nosy um and that people have, have poor judgment and they do stupid things and but there's consequences to that you know mind your business you know not everything requires your your opinion, um, you know. But sometimes people just don't get that. You know. For me, I only get involved if I see something wrong. I see someone getting hurt, uh, a man hitting a woman. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I, that's the only time I'll get myself involved. Um, outside of that, if it isn't like uh, crazy, then uh, it's not my business. Abuse to animals, I can't stand. I'll get involved. I see you kicking or beating on a dog, and it's like, yo, that's what I just, I can't, I can't just sit there and watch it happen. 
um, but I'm also very, very aware of when things go south, you know, like, or the mindset of the person you're dealing with. You always got to be careful. Some people don't understand the value of life. They're looking for a problem on purpose. They're hoping that you say something, you know? I mean, there are people that just leave their house just to start a problem. They're looking for a problem. I mean, look at that guy. I don't know it was. I don't know what state it was. I just saw it on the news. A guy puts on full body armor and he starts shooting up a mall. I mean, a little parking lot. Crazy. Yeah, I think. You know, my opinion about that whole migration to Texas, it is, um, I think, I think blue state leadership has made a decision to balance out the voting. So a lot of um, red or Republican supporters have moved out of California and New York. I mean, I'm sorry, to put the uh, uh, Democrats have moved out of California and New York two red states like Texas. And now what happens is the voting system gets dis distorted because now you have more voters. I think it's a way of just evening out the playing field and making it harder during primaries. Um, because New York and California, if you look at how they're making decisions, they're in line. They're hundred percent in sync. Um, when one decides to say there's an emergency, uh, state of an emergency, the other one does the same exact thing. Uh, and the mass exodus, I think is all intentional, in my opinion. I think they're just trying to uh, skew the voting. That's just me. It just seems too obvious that uh, that many people are running uh, so there's going to be it's going to be tough primaries on both sides. So I think this that's why there's this whole big push with what's happening, and you know, I think that's why it's a, it's even more important now that everybody does their homework on who you're voting for, the history of the person that you're voting for, not the second bites, their history. You know, uh, and I think people just only hear the sound bites. Those those casual voters, they hear the sound like, oh, look, he's for me and he's this and he's that. No, his history was proving that he was against everything you believe in. He's only saying the things because he wants your vote. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's exactly. I mean, I moved out here because it was getting crazy out there on the East Coast with... Um, you know, the whole passport thing that was just extreme that was just extreme all that stuff i was like ah all right, we gotta get out of here i mean the lockdowns were out of control in new york it was sounding like it was australia um you know i was just waiting for them to say that they're gonna start locking you up if you're outside and not vaccinated because it was getting out of hand in the east coast that's bad it's time for me to go um you know it got scary you know it was everything was closing down you know everything was like i mean the company i worked for closed down a lot of other companies closed down i mean it looked like skeleton oh um, it's like i gotta go place where you know my family has a chance i have a chance you know i'm not gonna make it here And anytime there's something new, New York and California, the first ones to embrace whatever that new is, whether it's monkeypox, whatever it is, um, the first ones to embrace it and shut everything down. Um, so it's like I can't continue to have things shut down all the time and affect my income. I gotta go to a place right where things are stabilized and you, you can make money and feed your family.
you know there is a scary scary time on this planet <laughs> scary time Next, the rest, I mean, you don't even know what to believe anymore. I think that's uh, it's, it's the art of war. What's happening in politics is you know, Sun Sal said it, you know, disinformation, destroy from within, you know, create chaos and mass confusion, lack of trust, and uh, people will vote with emotion rather than with logic. Yeah, because people were creatures of emotion and, you know, rational thinking is out the door. You know, it's like, use your, use your cavessa, right? You know, think logically, do your research. You know, nobody wants to re read those bills that they're trying to pass and those, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, because, oh, that's too much. I'm not going to read that. Oh, you know, it's like, oh. But then, then we complain when things go south. Like, wait, what the hell? What happened? I didn't vote for that. You didn't vote at all. You didn't do research. You can't complain if you don't vote. You don't have the right to complain if you don't vote. Yeah. Yep. Dependency. Dependence on the, you know, it's like, take the time to study the players, their motives, their agenda. Take the time. And then make your call. And sometimes, even if you do take the time and vote, sometimes you're not going to be fully happy with the outcome. But at least you did your homework. You did the research. You know, you didn't. Um, you didn't have. You, you didn't take shortcuts. You didn't just uh, believe in sound bites. You know, it's like that song says: "Take your time, young man." Mama used to say, don't you worry to get it old. You know, take your time. Do your research, do your homework. Stand tall by your, your decisions, you know. And then learn from it. The biggest thing is learn from it. If you voted for someone and uh, then you, you got snookered, you got bamboozled, run amok, let astray, then you know next time. All right, the reason this happened um, at least I had to do it and again. It's your know, one of many votes, but at least if you did your due diligence, that's all you can have ask for. It's tough. It is. It is tough. Um, you know. I know the the last few I was on the fence. Um, I was on the fence and uh, and then uh, I mean and then the best thing you could do is debate somebody or have a conversation a healthy conversation with somebody who has an opposing view that you have right that's what I say I mean I had friends of mine who were politically they were on a whole different spectrum and we would sit down and just have conversations asking the whys. Why do you feel that way? Why is this? Why is that? Why is this? Where'd you get that information from? And you learn. I learned so much by having those conversations with my buds um, about the lack of information that I, I had, which influenced my decision. And I was like, well, maybe I was too, I, I rushed it. Maybe I, I should have done my due diligence. Maybe I should take the time and go back and uh, um, and uh, do some more research, you know, 
And that's the best thing you can do for yourself is uh, do the research and try to understand the other side of the fence. You know, don't just be too quick to um, to judge. You know, tr- you know, because you'll learn something. You, it might not change your perspective, but it'll it'll it might not change your decision, but your perspective on things will will definitely be influenced. That's why I looked at it. You know, and 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 have it in a diplomatic, respectful way. You don't have to call people names because they don't they don't buy into your belief system. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You can be extremely respectful, because I believe in that, that debating um, influences education. Um, I love to learn, and I learn to learn from people who are passionate about subject matters that I might not be passionate about. You know, and um, you know, I want to know the why's behind the way they think. It's the best thing you can do for yourself or anybody else. Understand the why. You know, life's too short to think that you have the only opinion that matters. Um, you know, because they believe in something as much as passionately as you do. I, I want to know why they feel that way. You know, I know many times my 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 decision has been swayed because I took the time to learn from others. Um, it's the best thing you can do for yourself. Um, you know, I mean, I've, I've had friends who are just like, they will not, they will not, they will not, they will not uh, give in. Their view is the only view that matters. And, uh, and that's it. And, uh, You know, you can't, I'm not gonna fight with them because of it. Uh, you know, they believe what they believe, and that's fine. And I believe what I believe, and that's fine. You know, and uh, I equate it to um, a child. Right, your child's always asking, "But why, mommy? But why, mommy? But why, mommy?" You can't say because I said so. That's the worst thing you can do for anybody. You got to say, "Well, this is why I made this decision, or this is why I believe what I believe." That in itself will help the uh, the child, um, you, the relationship grow. Um, Um, you know, my mom did a great job in explaining the whys to me when I was a kid, which is why, (laughs) which is why the whole concept of why is so important to me, you know? Oh, I didn't want it late at 45. Wonder, okay, that's what I wanted at. There you go. Yeah, because I said so, is um, it's a conversation killer. It's people who are not prepared to have that conversation. Um, it's one of the things when, when I was in management, uh, if anybody ever said that, that was my moment to uh, challenge, because uh, I never said it to my team, and uh, I would never want to be said to me. So anytime someone said because I said so, that's when the the combative Sam came out. Uh, you challenge that mindset, you know. 
take that out of your, your, your vocabulary because I said so. And continue. And then whenever you f- face with somebody who says, because I said so, go back and challenge them. You know? Don't accept it. I don't. Never will. Uh the wrong one. This is the one. (laughs) Because I said so. (laughs) I know, right? You know how many arguments I got um, in the workplace because someone said, because I said so. I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, no. That's not working for me. Uh, where you got that from? Um, because I started saying, that's a like, good. Right. So, obviously, you don't have the information to be able to uh, persuade me to buy into what it is that you're trying to, you want me to do. So I'm gonna gonna go and speak to someone who has that information so I can understand the whys behind it. And people will get so pissed off. Who do you think you are going above me? I said, I'm not going above you just because you said so, which means you don't know why. So I'm gonna find out why. (laughs) Most people are afraid to do that. You know, because, uh, you know, it was like, oh, I don't want to lose my job. Question the whys. Anybody in a leadership position has the responsibility to be able to um, teach the, the, the whys behind decisions that are being made. Because there's a better, well, I, I 100% believe that when the team understands the agenda, the motives, the whys, and um, they're more likely to embrace it and deliver the result that you're looking for. When they don't understand it and you throw in that stuff, when you say because they said so, that means there's a lack of respect for your team. Um, and uh, so that's the worst thing you can do. Because then it creates resentment. You know, like, oh, this guy doesn't respect me. Look at the way he talks to me. He doesn't, doesn't even want to take the time to tell me why. You know, like I'm some sort of knucklehead. And you don't want that kind of talk. You want to be able to teach. If you're in a leadership position, your job is to teach. So teach. That's why I look at it. No. What am I missing? Let's go zoom out. <laughs> Just a quick chuckle there. I know, right? All right, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. And then we get his face. And then I'll add a background. One thing I forgot to take was duty with me when I went on my trip. Um, I wish I would have taken him with me. Uh, the, the figure, the figurine. Oh, that's not it. 
Maybe it is, but. Hmm. I'm listening to my wife and my sister downstairs. Uh, it's funny. Hearing the math. All right, boom. So there he is. So now I do need a background. So um, what I want is I'm just going to do a simple ground. Let me move him in here. Uh, let me get that into the folder. All right. So let's create a ground. Brown. You sound like you when my manager has to tell. Less decisions from open management. We get a lot of because of that stuff. Yeah, so here's a good example. I had two, there was two gentlemen that were competing for the director position. I was the operations manager of security and I reported to the director level. But two of them were you know, vying for it. One of them was on vacation, the other one comes down and gives me a mandate saying that I have to cut the workforce by 50% and I have a couple of weeks to do it, right? And the workforce, I was responsible for detectives, guards, auditors, office personnel, all those people. So I didn't understand the why behind it. I said, wait, why are we eliminating it when we're the number one um, store in the company, when we have the highest case results, we have this, I, 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 all these things. And his response was because I said so. That was the worst thing you can do because what I did was I wrote a letter and I sent it to the top and I outlined and I gave them data and I gave them, you know, what we've done to eliminate risk, to improve safety, to awareness, communication, all these things. I gave them all the stats. And then I also put the adverse effect. What happens when we reduce that workforce? Now we response time is impacted. This is impacted. All these things. So um, then it came down from the top that um, no cuts will be and happen what will, will happen um, to disregard that mandate right but then I got called into the office because the other one came back from vacation and they both you know came at me ripping me up who do, who do I think I was blah 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 what was going on and I looked at the one that came back from vacation I said no when he said it I asked him why and he said because I said so and I looked at the other boss and I said would you ever say that to me? And he said, no, I didn't know that that's what happened. Can you leave? And then they got into it. Because <laughs> the one that was on vacation, um, um, he already, we already established a foundation where Sam will, I'll walk through fire for you. Just, just give me the whys behind it. I might not like it, but I need to understand the why. I need to understand the significance, the impact, you know, how we landed there, because then I have to communicate that to my people. And if I don't have that information, you know, and, and they're looking at me, they're going to have a lack of respect or regard for me because they're just saying, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. So that's the worst you could do is to set yes, your, 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 your leadership team up for failure. Um, uh, and uh, I wasn't having it. So that was how that, that transpired. <laughs> um, but, you know, it didn't happen that year, but the following year, decisions were made to make cuts company-wide but it was it were communication communication months in advance you know you know memos started coming out meetings started coming out with the, with management saying this is why we have to as an organization reduce headcount in these di these divisions and these departments and blah 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 so we had plenty of time to prepare we had the right information we knew our talking points all these things and so I was able to save a lot of positions for a year, but you know, the following year we had to make those cuts and I understood it the following year. You know, um, explain the whys, that's all I say. Explain the whys.
Okay. And behind that, I'm going to put the sun. So we're going to get that sun in there. Let's get a circle. We're going to make it like a yellowish. Oh, I hear my dog's got acting crazy back there. All right. Let's move you. Right there. Right there. All right, let's hide these guys. Let's drop the color. Hey, where's that circle? Ah, uh, hell no. All right, let's get that back in there. That's there, that's there. There he is. Maybe, yeah. Actually, what I want is, I want an orange. And then maybe the background behind that, I'm going to make it a, like a reddish orange, like a darker. Boom. Right? So I could, so it goes from like dark to light. So at the bottom, multiply. Let's do this. go higher right and then what we're gonna do is get some clouds in there that's um some orange clouds Seven. Oh, there it is. There it is. And we'll do some lighter yellowish. Then maybe like a right. Multiply with the orange spray paint. And we did that. Oh, that's not multiplied as normal. Then the ground, we're going to do overlay, orange. There we go, right there. And then maybe do like Little shine there. 
And then now, because I did that, now I gotta go to his body. Overlay. Spray paint. Let's get the uh, 100. the the stick the night stick bingo is that red oh I didn't even do that with you Did I do it with you there you go. I gotta fix the nightstick. Where's the nightstick color? There's the nightstick. I didn't even do that. I think, for the sake of this and keeping it simple, this is Duty as Dread. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Wow, nearly two hours, Sam. You you, you went in today. Woo, that's crazy. Uh, where is this? Uh, where's my thing? I have this. Um, sorry about that, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, if you like uh, Duty as Dread, um, give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Recommend this channel to a friend. Um, let's see what I got here. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Okay. And thank you for Creators Outlet. The puppy is like, are you done yet? <laughs> I know. I know he's standing guard at the door because they know that when I'm done drawing, it's it's nap time. And I used I should have been done an hour ago, but I was having fun with this dread one. And he has so many parts um, on there. But uh, yeah, thank you, Joe D. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Creators Outlet, uh, for joining me and everybody watching in silence on Twitch and on Facebook. I appreciate every one of you. Um, and uh, if you haven't done so already, guys, sign up for There's an Ingrid on My Toilet, book number three. Next Tuesday, we go live, and I want to say thank you to the 131 of you who already signed up. But uh, And I hope to see you there um, at the live launch because it's going to be fun. So with that said, I am your host, Samuel, Sam the Crazy Man Vera, and I'll see you tomorrow on Cast the Crazy Podcast because we have a special guest coming up. I'll talk to you guys soon.
You guys all have a great day. Thanks for the conversation, Joe. I appreciate it. It was fun. Peace out, guys. Hey, don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that like button. Share it with a friend. And pick up a copy of Disney Under My Toilet on DutiesWorld.com. See you next time. Have a great day.